Those results are from Nedbank this morning show a 25.8% fall in headline earnings to 4.3 billion rand for the year to December in line with guidance given by the group. Of course the fall in profits follows a tough year for banks with rising retail impairments and falling demand for credit. Nedbank's outgoing CEO Tom Boardman joins me now in studio to take us through the numbers and the prospects. Tom, good afternoon. Thanks for coming into the studio today. Um, you say the turnaround really started in the third quarter of last year and really as South Africa came out of recession the same period. Compare if you can the, the first half of the year and the second half of the year. Was it a tale of two halves? Yeah, I think we, it's, it, you know, it hasn't been just a sudden shift. It's been a gradual improvement. So if we look at things like our credit loss ratio, which is worse than last year <coughs> for, for the whole year, you know, from 117 uh, basis points last year to 147 this year. But it, at the mid-year, it was 157. So after 18 months of seeing it getting worse every single reporting period, this is the first time that it is, uh, it's turning down. And we've also seen that uh, you know, the consumer is still taking a lot of strain, but the consumers who were maybe one or two payments in arrear have now started catching up. But the ones who are kind of three or four or five payments in arrear, which puts them into default, are, are still not finding that, uh, the ability to pay two payments in one month. So the uh, South African consumer has still taken a lot of strain and obviously there's more things in the system that would uh, kind of say it's going to go on for a while yet. So a couple of months into the new financial year, are you still seeing that strain? And how about the, the corporate impairments? Because we know from many of the banks, corporate impairments were lagging those retail impairments. Well, I have to say our corporate uh, divisions have done spectacularly well. Uh, our large corporate business uh, have impairments still way below what we would through, see as sort of through the cycle range, uh, much better. Uh, business banking, we expected our small and medium enterprises to start taking strain because they usually do before the large corporates. They had a very good uh, year all in all and a very good second half. The very small business, the SMMEs, people who uh, run small shops, often funded with mortgages on their houses, they're the ones still taking strain. But the corporate sector is in remarkably good shape. Are you lending to the corporate sector at this stage? Because that's been one of the criticisms leveled at banks, that there hasn't been <coughs> enough lending to the corporate sector to help pull them out of this slump. Well, I don't think there's been any shortage of uh, ability to lend to the corporate sector because uh, so South Africa is incredibly fortunate that our banking system has come through this crisis in extremely good shape. No, not ability perhaps, but appetite to lend to. <clears throat> the thing is the appetite for money from the, cons from, from the corporates is very muted. So the one thing that we have seen continuing it has been infrastructure spend, but that's largely been driven by government infrastructure spend. What happens in times like this when turnovers drop, corporates actually pump out cash because their working capital reduces less stocks, less debtors. As the cycle turns, and now we've come out of, uh, officially out of recession in the last quarter of last year, uh, and in slightly better shape, uh, GDP growing slightly faster than I think people had expected, we will, I, I absolutely am sure, start seeing more demand coming from the corporates. Well, of course, you had 8.4% growth in your loan book in the second half of the year, uh, made m modest market share gains. Um, where are those gains? Where have you been making them? In the corporate and business banking side. Uh, that's been where I, I think we've had a very good team on the ground and particularly business banking we have decentralized our decision making we think the people on the ground know their clients better and uh, faster turnaround times and we've been gaining market share there but you do say you have been applying prudent risk appetite parameters within that lending well one one has to you know if you don't sort of learn from uh, the tough times we've been through well you know when are you going to learn so one has to be more prudent and uh, I think things like the residential mortgage market where all of us went down a very n wrong and unsustainable road of lending 100% of loan to value. You know, that's uh, an anomaly if you look over the last 30, 40 years in residential mortgages. And we've got to get back to, uh, you know, people have got to save, put a deposit down and uh, we'll lend the rest. But of course, we know residential mortgages is one of the areas where Nedbank had been lagging behind the other three big ones. Is this an opportunity now, do you think, as the economy starts to recover, to start trying to grow market share in that segment? Well, I wouldn't say necessarily grow market share, but certainly to hold our own. We, you know, the old adage, you make your worst loans the, uh, in good times and you make your best loans in bad times, I think is, is very true. And at this stage, uh, absolutely, I'm sure that the loans that we are making now are good loans and I'd be happy to gain market share in that particular sector. Of course, you say in the commentary that the strength of the balance sheet positions you to capitalise on growth opportunities. Are we looking here at organic growth opportunities? We know, of course, that you have taken on the, the balance of Imperial Bank that you didn't hold. What sort of opportunities do we have here? <coughs> I think we'll be looking at, at both, uh, but certainly for organic growth you need to hold more capital. And I think the most pleasing thing of the, our results this year is to see that our 
total capital is now sitting up, uh, moved up from 12.4 to 14.9. That's a massive shift upwards in capital. And our core tier one capital, kind of shareholders' funds in essence, uh, knocking at the 10% mark at 9.9. .9. Now that's above what we see coming out of any of the new rules that might emerge out of uh, Basel or the Bank of International Settlements. So we are well positioned uh, for both organic growth and should there be opportunities for acquisition to make those as well. What's the optimum level of capital for you? As you said, it's sitting at 14.9% at the moment. Well, you know, we are already ahead of what we set as our target ranges for capital. And uh, I think everybody's now just uh, playing a bit of wait and see to see exactly what the new international regulations come out with. But uh, all indications, as I said, is that the Nedbank, and I'm glad to say the whole South African banking system, are ahead of the curve and already beyond where we are likely to see numbers coming out of Basel. Tom, of course, these are the last results you'll be presenting. Mike Brown's going to be taking over from you next week, Monday, I think. Mm -hmm. And just looking at your tenure as, as the CEO of Nedbank, obviously you joined at a very difficult time just after the, the acquisition of BOE. Difficult times, and of course, you set yourself some targets. How do you think you've done there? How is Nedbank sitting as a new CEO comes on board? Well, I think one can only hope that uh, when you've been entrusted with a job, that uh, when you move on, it's in slightly better shape than when you, when you arrived. Uh, and I certainly think that is the case. And for me, the most pleasing thing about uh, looking at the six years of Nedbank is, yes, we met all our financial targets, but most importantly, everything we did was on a sustainable basis. So we put back into communities, we put back into education, in the environmental space, we are now recognized not only in South Africa, but globally as leaders in the environmental the space. Bank. Transformation, we're ahead of the curve. So I think the bank all in all is in pretty good shape going forward.